Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're actually gonna get started writing some real world sort of tests. Now we have a very, very, very basic example. We're gonna be testing a single function with Jest, but we're gonna be writing our very first assertions that are actually meaningful. As in, these assertions are going to assert that something should be some way, and then it's going to pass or fail whether or not the code is executing successfully. So let's get into that right now. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is taking this sort of base that we've worked up with, right? You now sort of know a little bit, at least in theory, you know a little bit about what Jest is doing. Jest is uh, taking our test files, running these test functions here, and then based on the assertions, if they are true or if they are correct, if the assertion is correct, then it's going to pass our tests. It doesn't necessarily have to be true, right? You, you could expect false to be falsy, and I guess you could say that's false, but the assertion is basically you're asserting that something is one way. And if it's not that way, it's going to fail the test. So let's actually get asserting some real code here. For instance, let's go ahead and write a basic function. Now I'm going to export this function and it's just going to be export. And we can say, uh, let's go ahead and name this just be a const. And this is going to be one of the examples that you see everywhere. And there's a good reason for it because it's a great sort of introduction to testing, right? So we can say export const, and then we have a function add. Now this is going to be simply a function that adds two numbers, X and Y. And now we can simply just have this be an arrow function. And what we can do here is we can just simply return X plus Y. Okay, so we have this function. And if you really wanted to simplify this function, you could just write it all in one line. No worries here. I'm going to keep this like this. I don't think I have any linting set up. So it's not going to, to fix that for me or change that. And, and in fact, if you wanted to do that, the um, I'm going to just have this in here just so a little bit of extra JavaScript -y stuff. Well, if you wanted to have this be the most concise way this function could be written, it could be written like this. Um, this is the exact same thing. When you don't have brackets here, it's an automatic return. So you wouldn't need this return statement and you would automatically return X plus Y. So if you're looking at this being like, why don't you write that in a more concise way? Well, I just want to keep this nice and readable, especially if everyone is not at the same level for JavaScript. So again, you can write it this way if you'd like. I like this. So um, either way, we just have a function here. It's going to add two numbers. Now we could use that function in our application anywhere. You could think of this as all sorts of things. I write functions in my code outside of React all the time. For instance, maybe I have a function that's formatting a number to have a dollar sign, right? Or, or, or you know, limited the cut off the um, decimal points so that it's formatting a specific price, right? And maybe that function is just called format price. And maybe I want to test that function specifically. Well, this is the kind of stuff that you would use for that. So we would have a test file and let's go ahead and get rid of our fake tests, or at least let's get rid of one of them and let's comment the other one out. And what we want to do here is we want to import our function. Now, since this is a non default import, as in this is a named export, export const add, not default, we have to bring it in inside of curly brackets where we could say import add from and then dot dot forward slash app. Okay. And that's going to give us access to the add function. You could call this function. We could do, let's do a console log inside of here. This is just inside of my test file. And we could just do add one comma two. We could run this. And the cool thing is that even though just is going to fail, like this is going to fail, we still get the output of that log. You can see that this is returning three. Okay. So at least we know that our function works. Uh, but let's say we always want to make sure that this function works regardless of the work that we do to this function or other functions. So what we can do to that is write our first test. So let's go ahead and uncomment out this fake test and we can test the add function and you can name your test anything you'd want. But I like to name it either the name of the function or if I'm doing a react component, I end up naming it like the actual react component like this. And that's just a personal thing. You can name these anything that makes sense to you. All you need to know is that if you see that test fail, you're going to want to know where to look, right? 
So again, if we were to expect true to be truthy, this is going to pass and all of our tests are good. We still get our log output, but we don't want to just expect true to be truthy. For instance, we want to, well, let's set, go ahead and set a variable. We want to say const and we can say um, value is going to be equal to add and let's pass one and two in. Okay. So as you'd expect, we would expect value to be equal to three. So if we swap out some of the things in here, you could say we expect value to be, and you might be thinking, well, how do we do to be three, right? For instance, uh, this is truthy. So how do we use this? Because obviously the methods here have to exist. So if we do dot, you can see all of the different methods. Now there's a ton of these different methods of which we're going to be going over a considerable amount of them because we do use a lot of them, like to be called with, to be close to, to be defined, to be falsy, to be greater than, to be instance of, to be null, not a number, right? As you can see, there's tons and tons of stuff here. So we can really test everything very, very nicely. So let's go ahead and what we want to be looking for is, well, what would you expect? We, we used to be falsy or to be truthy. So you might think there might just be a general to be number, but there isn't. What we do have is a just to be. So if we select to be, we can say to be three, as in we expect the value of this function dot to be three. Now, different assertion libraries, if you're used to something like Chai or Mocha, they could make this a little bit different of a process, but for the most part, the way you're going to be seeing assertions being written is that you expect something to be something, right? I expect three to be three. And since you'll know in a basic comparison, three is going to be equal to three, let's go ahead and save this. You can see in our code here, our test passes, which is awesome because obviously, well, you know, we, we're writing this to have our test pass. And now the cool news is that we have some basic testing infrastructure in here. So let's go ahead and delete this log here and let's leave this test in here. And I'll talk a little bit about a benefit of writing a test because some of this stuff seems stupid. You're like, I know this function is going to add, it works. Why do I need to change this? Or why do I need to have a test for this at all? And the answer is, well, let's say we had this syntax here and all of a sudden we were like, Hey, this syntax is more concise. And I go ahead and I come in here and I say, okay, I expect, and somewhere along the line, a key slips and I maybe have a minus in here, right? This is a large, a large jump here, but either way, you're refactoring this code, you're changing this code, and maybe something gets broken here. And while you're changing this code, you might not notice it. But all of a sudden, our test set, our test is going to fail and say, hey, man, we, we expected this value to be three. But the value that we're getting is negative one. So what's up with that? And you can know instantly before your code goes live that something is incorrect. So we're just simply saying that, hey, the add function is messed up. It expected three and it got negative one. And that can trigger an alarm for you to come in here and be like, oh, well, why is this add function not working? Okay, these are supposed to be plus. And because of that, I now have some refactored code here. Well, my test pass. And I know that this works. This is a big deal because I now was able to delete two lines of code, modify this considerably, but since the actual function of this code didn't change, it passed all of its tests and I'm totally convinced that this thing works. And this is why you absolutely need tests if your application or your project is growing in size. If you have a project and it's maybe just a simple static website, yeah, you probably don't need tests, but if you have an application that's getting larger and growing and growing, this sort of testing needs to be in place. And it is way easier to write the tests as you're writing the code rather than to save them for later. Now, if we really wanted to, what we could do is remove this whole const business. I'll leave this code in here. Um, let's duplicate these lines here. I'll leave this in here just so you can have this in your notes, but we can even run this function directly inside of this expect if you were only doing this once. That way we could do something like also, we should expect maybe like a five and a two to be seven. Now you typically don't need to have two tests that are testing the same kind of thing, but maybe in this kind of case, uh, you'll want to make sure this is true because what if the function itself was just outputting the number three? right? Because then this test would, would, would pass, right? 
So you can see our test is still passing. It's still one test suite, still one test pass, but we have two assertions. And you can see, actually, let me illustrate that. Um, so if we save this and the test pass, you can see that this is a, a, a pass. But if we head to our app.js and we were to simply just return three from here, you can see this is a false positive and that the test is still passing. But then if we were to come into our app.js, uncomment this one out, the five and two, this test is now going to fail. Okay. So there are some instances in which you'll want some a little bit of redundancy in here. This is definitely one of those instances. Uh, let's go ahead and revert that back to the way it is. Uh, just X plus Y. And we can see that all of our tests are passing once more. So this is great. Uh, this is perfect for any sort of individual small sort of function like this. Unfortunately, this isn't necessarily something that all of your tests will be, especially if we're working with DOM elements, React components, and stuff on the screen. And of which that's going to be a little bit where the meat of the series is going to be. But I do want to make sure we have these foundations in here, right? That we're going to add two numbers. We're going to expect the result to be this, right? So I mentioned that I'm going to be giving you a lot of jargon. This test. This test is called a unit test. So this is going to be called a unit test because it only tests one thing, okay? So a test that tests one thing, for instance, the add function is going to be a unit test where you might have some tests that this function goes off and runs another function or goes off and runs another function or in the context of react, you have a component that renders a component that renders a component, right? Those are called integration tests because it's about code working together where a unit test is just testing one specific unit. In the case of a react situation, a unit test would not render the children components inside of a component. It would just render that one shell. And if a child component was inside of there, it would just sort of leave it alone. Okay. Now I'm going to make the case uh, as others have for writing primarily integration tests and not necessarily even thinking about it, but we'll get there when we get there. Okay. So as you can see here, this is a unit test. It tests our function and makes sure everything's working. And if we change things, it allows us to modify and improve the code with full confidence. Okay. So I hope you're seeing some of the benefits of testing already. We've now written our first real test and it wasn't too scary. And it seems like kind of annoying to have to do this, but again, you're going to see the benefits the first time you ever have to add a feature, change a feature or refactor some code. Code, and you're going to wish that you had tests for absolutely everything in your application. They're wonderful. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. In the next video, we're going to dive into some more things where we're going to be doing what's called integration tests. From there, we're going to dive into some more things where we're faking some data. We're going to get into some React stuff where we're rendering React components. And again, we're going to dive into all of the concepts. So hopefully this has been a painless introduction to testing so far, and please continue as we get into some a little bit more complex stuff, but again, I'm going to keep it very, very easy. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.